I'm thankful that you're here this morning. If you would take your copy of the biblical text and turn to Luke chapter 5. Jesus is so many things to us that are children of God. He is our Savior. He came to this earth to be our Savior. He's our Redeemer. We can be redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb of God. He's our teacher. He continues to teach us through His Word. We're to enthrone Him as King on the throne of our heart. He's Lord. He's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. But something that we must remember and not let escape our thinking is that Jesus is to be our master. And as our master, we are to serve Jesus and obey His every command, every word, to obey His command without hesitation, without murmuring, without dragging our feet. And to serve Him as master is to carry out His bidding even though we might not see the urgency of it or the necessity of it or even understand why we're commanded to do something. But we still, we simply act because he is the master and we act upon the authority of the word of our master. I think some of the most wonderful teachings of our Lord while he was here on this earth was not just in what he said, but what he did. Objective lessons, using objects, using miracles, he often found the occasion to make some very powerful points. And such is what we see in our text this morning. In Luke chapter 5, if you'll look at the first three verses, Luke writes, So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. The multitudes were pressing around Jesus, crowding around him. This shows that his following had increased, his popularity had increased as a teacher. They wanted to hear what he had to say for whatever reason. Some had pure motives, some didn't. But the crowd was so big that Jesus got into one of the boats along the shore and he taught the multitude from the boat. This lake of uh, Gennesaret we see is another name for the Sea of Galilee, a particular portion of the Sea of Galilee. Sometimes it's referred to as the Sea of Tiberias. But the boat that he gets into is the boat of Simon, Peter. Can you imagine how Peter must have listened to the teaching of Jesus? And men often depict Jesus as someone who was just so soft-spoken, almost a whisper when we see him portrayed oftentimes as a teacher, just whispering things. But here, it had to be loud and clear, teaching from a boat out in the water to people who were standing or sitting on the shore. And then we see in verses 4 and 5 of Luke chapter 5, as we continue, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So at this point, Jesus had finished preaching, but he had not finished teaching. And Jesus said to Peter, whose boat he was in, he said, Launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a catch. Now, to me... This seems normal. I would not think much about this. But Peter, let's look at it through his eyes. This would have seemed very strange to him because he fished at night and he fished close to the shore. 
So to him, who didn't just fish to have fun and to relax from time to time, once in a while, he did this for a living. This was his livelihood, and his experience had told him to fish at night and to fish close to the shore. And now a carpenter tells him to, in the daytime, to go out into the deep and to put his net down. Do the opposite of what your experience, your career has taught you to do. And I want you to notice Simon Peter's response to Jesus' word. He said, Master, we have told all night. Master, he calls him. This word master comes from the ancient Greek word epistate. Now this is not an ordinary word that we find a lot in scripture in the original language. This is a word that is used only seven times and every time it's used in the book of Luke and every time it's referring to Jesus. There is something very special about this word. It is referring to a commander or a leader. And with this title, Simon Peter is showing that he is willing to take orders from Jesus, that he has confidence in Jesus, and that he is going to be obedient to anything that Jesus commands. Peter obeys in recognition of the authority of Jesus rather than just his instruction. Peter obeyed not because of what Jesus said, but because of who Jesus is. Jesus was a teacher, but he wasn't just any teacher. He is the Son of God, and he speaks with authority. Do you remember after he taught the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, that those who heard him were astonished. No one has ever taught like this with such authority. So Peter said, Master, at your bidding, even though it goes against any lick of sense to me, even though I don't understand, even though it goes against everything in my career that I've been taught and observed, but Master, because you said it, I will do it. And people, that is walking by faith and not by sight. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, he said, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Peter is saying, Master, we've worked hard all night. We have nothing to show for it. You ever done that? Fish all night, not catch a thing? He's doing this for a living. But he said, at your bidding, I will let down the net. You think about all the excuses that Peter could have given Jesus. I've worked all night. I'm tired. I'm weary. I'm exhausted. Now I know a lot more about fishing than carpenters. Or the best fishing is at night, not during the day. All of the crowd around us and the loud teaching that you've been proclaiming, that scared the fish away. And we've already washed our nets. Did you notice that in the reading? The nets are clean. After the job is done, they have to do some cleanup work. That's been done. The net's been clean. Or Jesus, you are the master as far as religion is concerned. But I'm the master fisherman. Anybody ever told you they mastered some occupation? They've mastered something? Maybe... Jesus was a master carpenter. I don't know. But Jesus is the master of all. He is over all. And we should serve him as master. Peter says, at your word, I will let down the net. I will do what you said. And that's a great statement of faith by Peter. He trusts in the word of the Lord. God's people throughout all the ages 
have lived and gone forth with confidence that we read here in Luke chapter 5. The confidence that Peter had. He's left us a good example. At your word, he says, and you remember at his word there was light. At his word there was sun, moon, stars, and planets. They were created at the word of the Lord. At your word, life came to this earth. At your word, creation is not only held together, it's sustained. And at your word, empires rise and fall. History unfolds your great plan. Are we walking by faith and not by sight? Behold, I thought, Peter could have said, it's a lot better to fish at night and close to the shore than in the day and out in the deep. Look at verses 6 and 7 as we make our way through the text. And when they had done this, they called a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and to help them, and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. They caught a great number of fish. They had been out all night fishing, caught nothing, and now when they do what Jesus says, they catch a great number of fish. Peter didn't make excuses. He did what Jesus said. And I believe he was rewarded for that. He understood that he knew more about fishing than Jesus, perhaps as a carpenter. He had worked all night without any results. And I believe the only reason why Simon Peter did what Jesus said is because he believed who Jesus is, the Son of God. And later, he would make that great confession. And Jesus would say that he would build his church. We need to serve Jesus as master. Stop making excuses and just at his command do what he says. So much of a catch that they needed the help of others to bring them all in to get the job done. And look at verses 8 through 11. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Peter, in response to this great catch, falls down at the knees of Jesus. How much did Peter know about Jesus at this point in his life? If you look back in Luke chapter 4 at verses 38 and 39, Luke tells us, so he, speaking of Jesus, arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house, but Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever, and they made request of him concerning her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she arose and served them. Jesus, at this point, enters Simon's house. In our text, Jesus enters Simon's boat. Simon has witnessed two miracles of Jesus. And he who is an experienced fisherman, when he sees the great miracle that Jesus performed in the great catch of fish, falls to his knees and is ready to serve him and he's ready to drop the net now, not in the sea, but along the shore and to follow Jesus. Walking by faith and not by sight. 
Jesus provided something that Simon Peter needed, and he realized that. And you think about what a chain reaction this set off. Jesus started with three. We have Peter, James, and John. And that became 12. That became hundreds. And then thousands upon thousands through the century. I will make you fishers of men. This is a lesson in this chapter, in Luke chapter 5, about evangelism. Peter, James, and John, the twelve had followed Jesus from town to town, listen, sat at the feet of Jesus, listening to him teach, watching the miracles that he performed. But sadly, when Jesus was arrested in the garden, and taken to mock trials, they forsook him. Peter denied Jesus three times. Jesus looked at him, and Peter wept bitterly. Jesus was crucified. He was laid in a new tomb. On the third day, he came forth from that tomb, resurrected, proving to be the Son of God with power. Look in John chapter 21 with me. Turn your copy of the text to John chapter 21. We'll begin reading here in verse 3. This is after Jesus is risen, and he's going to appear to his disciples. John 21, beginning in verse 3, Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We're going with you also. They went out and immediately got the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Notice that night, that night, they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? And they answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it because of the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat for they were not far from land, but only about 200 cubics, dragging the net with fish. Peter and the disciples had been fishing at night and caught nothing And they've been fishing close to the shore. Again, Jesus tells them to put down the net. And they do. And they catch a multitude of fish. And he shows them, I am Jesus. Now is the time for me to leave and you to start fishing for men. And in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, Jesus told them, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Jesus says, it's time to go fishing for lost souls to bring them to my kingdom. They can be saved from their sins. You make disciples, how do you do that? Well, you go out and you find them. You... 
baptize them. Why baptism? If we serve Jesus as master, if we recognize him as master, we will do it because he said it. People say, well, I just don't see how baptism, how going down in that water, being immersed in water is going to wash away your sins. I don't see it. I don't understand it. Why the urgency of it? Why the necessity of it? Because Jesus said to do it. He has the authority. And he says, in fact, teach them every command that I've given. That's only one of them. Teach them every command. And I'll be with you. As Harley read earlier today from Hebrews chapter 13, Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. As he told Peter in our text of Luke chapter 5, stop fearing. We can serve him as master without fear because he is with us. And if we please him, it doesn't matter how many times we're rejected. They're rejecting really him and not us. But we don't need to fear what man can do to us. But we do need to fear if we don't serve Jesus as master and carry out the mission that he has given us. In Mark's account, at the end of Mark's gospel record, in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. We might can think of all kinds of excuses why we cannot carry that out, why we cannot do the Lord's bidding. Well, I'm just not a people person. I'm really shy. Okay. There's ways you can teach. Maybe it's not when we assemble in a classroom environment here, but there are ways that you can teach, and God expects us all, after a certain amount of time, to be teachers and not still having to be taught. The first principles of the oracles of God, over and over again, He expects us to move on from the milk to the meat and to be able to teach others. Are we doing this? Is the Lord's church growing? You know, when I talk to people and they say, yes, our congregation's going, and then I, they say, well, we had some people that came over from this congregation or that congregation. Okay, well, that, you know, that must be encouraging to you, but really they're just jumping from one aquarium to the next. And you think about those little nets, you try to scoop those fish out, and they, oh, we got one, and bring it over here, put them in our aquarium. Yeah, we're growing, are not we? Yeah, we're growing. We need to be out in the sea. That's the world, the lost, and we need to be bringing them to the Lord's kingdom. Now sometimes when we're out teaching, we we realize that people, even though they're intelligent, they're not listening to us. We run into a wall. Don't let that wall stop you. You you find the next person. Not everybody's going to accept it. We know that. The road to salvation is narrow. It's the road less traveled. But I believe if we keep working at it and don't grow weary and give up, even though we've been working through the night, we keep working and try to save souls. Peter served Jesus as master. I ask you this morning, are you serving Jesus as master? That you're going to obey his every command, even though you don't understand, you might not see why. It's hard for you to grasp. I say do it, because he is the commander. He is our commanding chief. He's the author of the book of salvation. To all who obey him, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 9. We have a limited amount of time here on this earth. Let's serve God as master. Let's be prepared to meet him in judgment. 
Paul, in Acts chapter 17, as he's preaching in Athens, says God commands all men everywhere to repent. We need to confess Christ. If we do that, he will confess us before the Father. We need to be baptized for the remission of our sins. That's how we become a disciple. And we need to go out and make other disciples and live faithful unto death. As a Christian, if we've been unfaithful, God stands ready to forgive us. Are you prepared to meet your God? Come if you need to while together we stand and sing.